Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Unwalkable Podcast. I'm your host, Unwalkable, and oh, I just wanted to do a quick stream to talk about a couple of things that were related to the big story that I was reporting on earlier today, which is the transgender bathroom issue in Edmond, Oklahoma, where there was a transgender male who assaulted two teenage females in a bathroom at Edmond Memorial High School. And I think this is loosely related, so I just want to talk about this for a second. There's a video out of Brittany Griner. And I, I'm honestly not sure whether... Uh, I know that she claims to be a female because she plays in the WNBA, right? But there's this video that I found, and I'm trying to figure out if it's a deep fake. It doesn't appear to be. I've had some other people look at it, and they don't really see it, but... It's something worth looking at. And that goes into the second topic that I want to talk about, which is Don Lemon actually coming out and saying the truth about why WNBA players are not uh, paid as well as, you know, NBA players, right? So that's what we're getting into. Do. So before we get into this and we look at this video, please like, subscribe, share the channel. All of those things uh, would appreciate your support. And super chats are open if you want to if you want to jump in there. They're always open. But that's that's the house cleaning. So, and I bring this up because earlier today I did a uh, live stream with Jenny White from Reclaim Oklahoma Parent Empowerment, and we talked about transgender males being in the bathroom with females and an assault that happened in Edmond, Oklahoma, related to that. So there's a concern here when it comes to this Britney Griner. So I'm, I'm tying this all together. There's a concern here that with this Britney Griner video, that is Britney Griner, was Britney Griner a biological male? Is she? I don't know. This video seems to suggest that uh, she might be or might not be. I don't know. But there are no, the, the, the issue about this video is that there's no scars under her, where her breasts should be, or were, or are, or I don't know. So we're going to watch the video. And as you can see, I've got a plan right here. This is Brittany Griner, and they say Brittany's name in it, right? Brittany Griner is shooting a basketball, and what appears to be Brittany Griner shooting a basketball. And I'll just, well, let's just watch the video real quick. You can, you can look at it yourself. Hold on. So there appears to be some kind of, and we can just take down the music. If you look at it, they say her name. That's the only reason I wanted to share the volume for a second was at the beginning is they say the name Britney. Shooting a basketball, shooting it very well. Brittany, Brittany, right? So this, uh, it's something to think about. Good evening, Wikipedia Snippet. How are you doing? Nice to see y'all here. But it, it's just very strange. And this this connects into the, the live cast I had earlier, because again, we were talking about transgender males being in a female's bathroom and an assault resulted from that. And the question here is whether or not Brittany Griner is a biological male who transitioned to a female, which is interesting. What would be interesting considering that Brittany Griner plays in the WNBA. And, or if maybe she had uh, hormone therapy at a young age and never needed the, the breast surgery because you're going to have scars from that, as we've seen. Or it could be this. This could be a deep fake video. But it would be, she's, you've heard she's intersex with Wikipedia snippet? Like legitimately in, intersex, which ha can happen, right? Which, uh, you know, makes the whole situation just an outlier all, all the way around. Obviously, she's a good basketball player. She's making these shots. Um. But it just, it, it struck me 
as something that needed to be talked about because if she is a transgender male, kids look up to the people who play professional sports, right? And as we saw in Edmund with the the story that came out in the Gateway Pundit today and Redux a few days ago, and then but first by Reclaim Oklahoma Parent Empowerment, there is an issue when it comes to kids emulating that and then it being transitioned, for lack of a better word, into high school settings, even in the reddest state in America, which is Oklahoma, from what they say, into Edmond Public Schools. And I want to just recap what the most important part of that conversation with Jenny White was today, was that we seem to narrow down what the problem was, is that there is a bill that allows parents to complain about that kind of situation that resulted in the the uh, assault of two female students within a 15-day window, but it's not clear as to whether or not they can do it after the 15-day window. But the bigger issue is that the, did the does the normal rank and file parent know that that happened, number one? And why isn't it a, a, a requirement that the school board itself or the, the administration of the school report that to the state board of education because they're all mandatory reporters already, which would eliminate the need for every parent to know about the provision, okay, where they have to report within the 15 days. And keeping in mind there's an incentive that the, the school not raise it to that level because if they're caught violating the state law on the subject, they can lose funding and accreditation. So, and we also uncovered the fact that the police refused to, or did not include the pronouns of the individuals in the police report, which I've heard of not including names, but not including pronouns, that I've never heard of. So what we are now is we're past the 15-day window. So can a parent even make a complaint? Should they have to if it's in the public space? Couldn't the State Board of Education just, you know, file something themselves? Does it have to be reactive? If they hear about it, if a state board member hears about it, can't they just bring it up? But that brings us into the situation with Brittany Griner and... It just looks like here, guys, that, that she's not, uh, uh, I don't know, if she's truly intersex, as Wikipedia snippet says, I, I wasn't able to find it. I researched it. I, I couldn't find whether or not she was intersex, trans, classifies herself as non-binary, but it, it appears from the waist up, Brittany Griner appears male. We could say that safely. And presents as male during this time around the pool. If the video is real, that's, that's the case, which brings me into, and again, this is not going to be a long live stream, but it brings, it brings me into what I think is another interesting point. So, so Don Lemon, Don Lemon was on the, and I got to figure this out. Hold on. Uh, Don Lemon was on a, a morning show this morning and he gets into it with, it's, it's on CNN, right? He gets into it with his fellow female uh, anchors on the, on the channel about the gender pay gap when it comes to the WNBA. So I, I'll share the video here real quick. I think this is an interesting thing to note considering how this all ties together, right? And and the what what's happening with the WNBA and what's happened with Brittany Griner. So just listen to this video. Here we go. This is Don Lemon on CNN this the morning. The men's team makes more money. Hey. If they make more money, then they should get more Here's money. Why is the, the men's team, team the men's team makes more money because, you know men, because people are more interested in it. But the he, men. guess who takes Whoa. part of blame? I have a big issue with this, guys. 
WNBA, same things happening to them. There's until also media, more interest in, in the hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Until big media companies, big tech companies, advertisers invest and put them on their airwaves more and allow people no, 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 and allow people to see it more and gain more fans, then you will push toward more equality. Okay. But if they are blocked in so many ways and not invested in as you much, guys are, they I'm don't even sexist. have a, they, I know you're I not, but they don't the, even does have a, a way in a, in a family of all women. I understand what you're saying, but not everybody honestly has the same skill. Not everybody has the same interest in the sport. I think the women should be paid more. I do. But if the but men, the, you're right that not everyone has the same skills because yeah. the women are better skilled. Well, the women are better skilled against My other job. women. But if the women played the, the women men, better skills? they wouldn't what? be winning the way that they win. Okay, I'm not right? going to get into. So I'm not I'm even going to get into. These ladies are shocked that Don Lemon is actually speaking some common sense, as am I. Because the fact of the matter is, is that the women are not more skilled. They're not. I'm not a sports person. All of these people can play basketball better than me. Okay. But sports is the, it's the, the most stark example of the need for meritocracy that we have in society today. And right, Wikipedia snippet, we just, we just don't pull the money. The WA, WNBA does not pull the money that the NBA pulls, which is the point that, that Don Lemon here shockingly makes. That, guess what? More people are interested in the men and the men's NBA. It has a longer standing history. That's part of it. They're taller, they're bigger, they're stronger, they're faster. And generally more entertaining to watch. Why? Because they can do things physically that the women cannot. These are facts. And the anchors here try really, really hard to make it seem as though the women are better at basketball than the men. And I don't even understand that point because it's objectively verifiable that they're not. If you want to prove it, take the best NBA or the, the worst NBA team and put them against the best WNBA team. I don't think that there would be any kind of competition there. Yes, uh, John John Small, that's a good that's a good point. She's trying to appeal to Lemon's sense of chivalry. Yes, but is chivalry the truth? Because what she says here, just listen to it. Listen to it. What she says here. She has the same skill. Not everybody has the same interest in the sport. I think the women should be paid more. I do. But if the but men, the, you're right that not everyone has the same skills because yeah. the women are better skilled. Well, the women are better skilled against My other job. women. He, he even but caveats it. He even caveats it. He even caveats it that the women are better skilled against other women. But the minute you put them against the men, there's no comparison. There's no comparison at all. So it's Don Don Lemon here is is for the first time I think. I've ever seen is actually, well, before, I mean, he had actually made great points about things years and years ago before he went just completely off the, off the rockers woke. Right. But Don Lemon here makes a great point and he's making a logical, objectively verifiable point. So let's just play through the Man, rest of the video. They Why, wouldn't what? be winning the way that they what? went. Okay, I'm not going right? to get into so, I'm not I'm even going to get into that argument. I'm just saying if the sport makes more money, that means there's more why money available. Why does it available. make more money? Because people are more interested in no, it. Right. Right. When right. I go it's to a sports a bar, guys, am I wrong? You guys don't want to say anything. Am I right? <laughs> He's making the case for meritocracy and by quite frankly, democracy. An open free market determines what it is that 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 gets the most money. If the WNBA had the viewership and the interest that the NBA has, right? If the WNBA had that same level of interest and earned the same level of money, I guarantee you they would pay the women just as much as they pay the men. I I, I don't see why they wouldn't.
And if they didn't, there would be a much better case for saying, hey, there's a gender pay gap when it comes to this. But then that brings us back to the dichotomy or the, the weird brain scrambling that goes to of what is Brittany Griner's situation? Is that video real? Right? Is that video real? And if it is, what is going on there, man? If she's truly intersex, that makes, that's a great point. So, so uh, John Small says, I've heard that uh, the WNBA gets financial support from the NBA. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, I, I would say that it probably has to because nobody watches the WNBA. Listen to what uh, uh, Don Lemon says here at the end. I will just, when I go to a sports bar, if there is a women's basketball game on, I'm just being which honest. Which is on air truth. less. People will say, literally you get flip to it see to the it guys? Less. I don't want to watch this. I'm just telling you. I okay. I mean, just, just <laughs> he's telling the truth. And the thing. When I go to a is, is Don Lemon going to get canceled for this? Tell me, chat. What do you think? Does the is Don Lemon going to get canceled for this, or will it just kind of get swept under the rug? Because he is making what he would classify as a radical right wing argument about the NBA versus the WNBA that doesn't track with all of his other lines of thinking. It, the, the 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 cognitive dissonance here is epic. It's absolutely epic. I'm shocked he is too, John. I'm, I'm shocked that he's going there too. I, I honestly can't, like, it's scrambling my brain a little bit that I'm hearing this kind of common sense come from Don Lemon. But I wonder if he could make the jump. I wonder if he could make the jump from using the common sense argument of boys shouldn't go into girls' bathrooms because it could end up badly for the girls. Do you think he would have, you think he would make that logical argument? You think he would make that logical jump? Probably not. He definitely would get canceled for that. But I just have to I just we have to play this again. Just look. Gain more fans. I have a big issue with this guys. WNBA, same things happening to them. There's until also media, more in the hold NBA. on, hold on, hold on, huh? Until Whoa. big media <laughs> companies, big tech companies, advertisers invest and put them on their airwaves more. Uh, and now, stop. Let's talk about that for a second. Big ad companies, big ad companies invest in ads for things lots of people watch. So what she's talking about here is an ESG filtered assessment of the way the market should work, that they should invest more in something that's going to offer them far less return for their investment because, you know, equity and stuff. She's making a moral argument about a market-driven issue. And Don Lemon is smacking her upside the head with the truth of the matter because CNN right now is experiencing that, oh, uh, guess what? where there is still a free market, which is media, honestly, CNN has lost the battle of equity because people vote by not watching it, right? And so you're seeing the house being cleaned at CNN because they for a long time made the same argument this woman is making and that he's fighting back against. Just listen to her one more time. Yeah, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Until big media companies, big tech companies, advertisers invest and put them on their airwaves more I and allow people no, 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 and allow people to see it more and gain more fans, then you will push toward more equality. Okay. But if they are blocked in so many ways and not invested in as you much, guys are, they I'm don't even sexist. have a they, I know you're I not, but they don't the even have a boy. shot. Okay, now look what he's doing here. This is so funny because he is so steeped in the intersectional uh um call out culture and the, the what do you call it, the, the kind of red guard way of living, that he has to couch everything in his identity. Look, guys, I'm not sexist. Look, I was raised with women. Oh, by the way, remember I'm black. 
right? Before he says the truth. This is what critical race theory, what critical theory, what queer theory and all this forces people into is forces them to use and grab their identities, their various as shields for when they might say something that's out of spun, right? And the fact that these two are women and he's the, the man in the situation even trumps the fact that he's black and that they're discussing a female situation where the female should have the intersectional hierarchy prize in the con in the conversation. And he's couching everything he says behind his identity. So he's using diversity as a human shield here to shield himself from what is going to be an unpopular opinion. Never, they, I know you're I not, grew up the only a boy in a, in a family of all women. I understand what you're saying, but not everybody, honestly, has the same skill. Not right? everybody has the same interest in the sport. I think the women should be paid more. I do. But if the but men... The, you're right that not everyone has the same skills because yeah. the women are better skills. Well, the women are better skills against start making other stuff up. women. But if the women played the men, Why? they wouldn't what? be winning. Now, hold on. I want to make a point about a social emotional learning here. Don Lemon, uh, John, John talked about earlier, John Small here in the chat said that he was playing on their chivalry, their sense of chivalry, right? Yeah, I agree. But there wasn't sh anything chivalrous. You don't have to, chivalry wasn't about ignoring objective truth, right? So Don Lemon here to be emotionally empathetic to the women in the room was just forced to parrot an objectively incorrect sentiment because the woman said it. That's, he, so, he learned that through so uh, uh, media-induced social-emotional learning. In, to, it, that's a weaponization of his empathy in this moment. And, and the woman here does that. Listen. The men, Why, they wouldn't what? be winning the way that okay. they win. Okay, I'm not going right? to get into so, I'm not I'm even going to get into that argument. I'm just saying, if the sport uh, women are better skilled against My other job. women, the, just right in here. the sport, I think the women should be paid more. I do. But if the but men... The, you're right that not everyone has the same skills because yeah. the women are better skilled. Well, the women are better skilled against My other job. women. So he, he accepts the premise, but then he actually, and good for him, flips it. But he still allows her point to stand in a way that it absolutely should not stand. Because I think in every actual measure that matters, men outperform women athletically, not just in basketball, but in all the, all the things, right? And so he's going through a struggle session here. It's a little mini struggle session. And quite frankly, it's it's interesting to watch Don Lemon grab a hold of some common sense in in this area, and and attempt to to make what he would call, if he were watching this later and someone else were in his position, say Alex Jones or Tim Pool or anyone else, would say they were right making right wing arguments. Radical right wing arguments. Woo it's amazing. Maybe, uh, do you think, chat, do you think that Don Lemon is either, do you think that he's coming to see the light when it comes to maybe a situation or two? Or do you think that, I mean, he just lost his show, right? He just lost his primetime show. He was, he's graciously, they're allowing him to stay on CNN, having been a part of of wrecking that company. Do you think he's actually seeing the light of the fact that the things that he's argued over the past four or five years have been complete lunacy? Or do you think that he's making a calculated decision to say, wait a minute, I gotta maybe start speaking some common sense or I'm gonna be flat out on my butt? I don't know, what do you think, chat? We'll just finish but, it up. But if the women played the men, Why, they wouldn't what? be winning the way that they okay. win. Okay, I'm not going right? to get into so, I'm not I'm even going to get into that argument. I'm just saying if the... So John, John Small says reason number two. He thinks it's reason number two that, that he doesn't really believe it. 
but he's, he's ticked at his bosses, right? And he's trying to save his own keister by presenting a nuanced argument, which just happens to be the truth to these ladies. But look, these ladies look very stressed. They look, they look very stressed about this whole thing from the get go, from, from the minute he starts the talking. The men's team makes more money. Hey. If they make more money, then they should get more hey, money. Why does the, the men's women's team... team the men's team makes more money because you know men, because people are more interested. In but he, guess who takes blank part of blank? I have a big issue with this, guys. WNBA, same things happening to them. Until There's also media, more interest in, in the hold NBA. On, hold on, hold on, hold huh? on. Until big media companies, the big tech companies, interest, advertisers the invest. And the media's interest in terms of investment is directly related to the public's in, interest in the investment. That's why Super Bowl ads by the way. That's why Super Bowl ads cost more than regular football game ads, because you have more eyes on the Super Bowl than you do on regular season or playoff games. So th this woman has lost the plot when it comes to what a free market is, but that's what ESG is, folks. That's what ESG investing is. We should give more money to something that doesn't earn it because equity. That's a redistribution of wealth based upon a figment of someone's moral imagination. That's what that is. That is a market-based decision based upon a figment of someone's moral imagination. That is ESG environmental social governance. That is the logic behind it. It's all emotion. Social emotional learning leads to social emotional control through those who implement what it is that you should be following and what you shouldn't. If they set the moral standard on you and you do not follow it, you won't get the money regardless of who is interested in it or not. You get it? Don Lemon here, this whole situation is really good for, for explaining what it is that we're dealing with economically that is driving this woke madness. That's right, John. Maybe when the WA will get more eyeballs, when <laughs> maybe, maybe that's right. Wikipedia said, get woke, go broke. Guys, I, for those who aren't chatting into the chat, I, I have more people than just these two. You can chat in. Super chats are open, by the way. But it's but do you see what I'm saying here? How this perfectly encapsulates. The, the issues that we're experiencing on a market level that drive the wokeness we're seeing in cultures that lead to girls getting assaulted in bathrooms by boys who are dressed as girls. You know, in that situation, nobody talks about it. That, that, that transgender, the male in that classroom in Edmond, Oklahoma, right? That classroom in Edmond, Oklahoma, the male was probably more apt to be violent because testosterone, which is inherent in males, makes you more violent. But also the fact that he's now a super duper protected class by being a transgender male, a biological male who presents as a woman, makes it much less likely that he gets in any real trouble for that assault. It's, it's amazing that, that people cannot see this. And what I want everyone to understand is, again, as I preach all the time, this goes right back to your colleges because your colleges are pushing the economic agenda that is making all this happen. I made two videos, one about the WEF and China and one about the WEF and the University of Oklahoma, which shows the direct link between the two and the, the, the social and societal transformation 
that's put out by OU's strategic research verticals and how it connects directly to the WF's global ESG economic agenda. This is not a conspiracy theory. They say it themselves. They say it themselves. It is, you know, and maybe I'll just show a little bit of that. So I got a little bit of time here. So it's it's astounding to me. It's astounding to me that I guess I and I need to remember that people don't, I haven't been studying this like I've been studying. So I'm going to try to show you, right? I'm going to try to show you exactly how it connects and exactly why I believe we have a bunch of rhino Republicans who are pretending to be against all this stuff so they can control the opposition because they're going to make tons of money off of what their university system is setting up in their community. And here's the thing. Nobody will ever be able to hold them accountable for it because if they win, if they actually achieve what it is that they want to achieve, what happens? Nobody will ever remember. Nobody will ever uh, they will be brainwashed out of ever thinking there's a problem. Literally, through social emotional learning, they will be brainwashed out of ever thinking there was a problem. So just, let's just watch a little bit of this video I made talking about the University of Oklahoma, the reddest state in the country, implementing the globalist agenda. The question is, what is actually the World Economic Forum doing? And of course, you all know um, or have heard about our um, annual meeting in Davos. But so that's only the tip of the iceberg. That's so only the tip of the iceberg. So that's only the tip of the iceberg for the World Economic Forum's agenda, which is Davos. Their whole agenda is designed to go into colleges. Listen, so this is the president of the University of Oklahoma in May of 2021. Shed moments have transpired in less than a year and a half. The speed and utter devastation that has come from a once in a century virus. The worst attack in our nation's capital since the war of 1812. Widening political divisions, exposing the fragility and preciousness of our democracy. A nation reckoning with systemic race. See, listen, he is spouting off left-wing ESG social justice talking points. The same talking points that Klaus Schwab and the other globalist organizations are preaching at you through ESG investments, through ESG monetary systems. You have a moral duty, a responsibility, well, who's going to implement that? No, it's not just the WF high top the thing. Nope, it's your university. It's the University of Oklahoma. Listen, so he just said, we'll bat that up. And preciousness of our democracy, a nation reckoning with systemic racism. What do these all have in common? So the World Economic Forum has created platforms. The World Economic? Um, so he asked, what do all to, these have in common? The world, and then here's Klaus Schwab saying, right? The World Economic Forum has created platforms to address these issues that the, the, the president of the University of Oklahoma was outlining in his commencement speech in 2021. Um, to address those issues much more on a micro level. Academia, science. Micro level. And I'm also proud that the World Economic Forum has a relationship with the University of Chicago. Okay, so he's saying here he has a relationship with the University of Chicago and uh, establishment Republican groups like the OCPA and all those other are just praising the university for adopting the Chicago Statement. Guess what? Those universities who adopt the Chicago Statement, which is just a statement, this is all supported by the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Office, by the way, this is their link to 
the University of Chicago, which is a link to the WEF. There it is. There's your connection. And look, what do they talk about? Oklahoma workforce development. Yeah. Actually, we have a community of 13 universities around the world working very closely. Um, and this is what I'm saying is that DEI supports this adoption of the Chicago Statement created by the University of Chicago in 2014 that has a relationship with the WEF and the World Economic Forum, which is going to outline everything you're going to see the WEF's agenda in this video, word for word outlined by the OU strategic research verticals that the president of OU says. So this is why you're seeing all the transgender issues, people. This is why you're seeing the Brittany Griner issue. This is why I'm making all the connections here. But look, President OU of OU Haraz has staked his career on getting DEI right. Why? Because it's going to pay lots of people money. With us and being engaged into our different activities. I turn our attention to OU's Vice President for Research and Partnerships. So this is President friend, Joe Haraz. My colleague, Tomas Diaz de la Rubia. Uh, with the greatest man in research and higher education and also the greatest name. Okay. So Tomas de, de la Rubia, the vice president for research and strategic verticals at OU, is the, wait for it, chair of the board of this CRDF global group. So World Economic Forum is um, very often... Um, Accused, or if I may use this word. So he's the chair of the board. Uh, now look, here's what I found about what this organization, CRDF Global, is funded by. You ready for this? As being, let's Russia, say... Russia, Kiev, Ukraine, uh, Almaty, the, the Defense Department, Homeland Security. But here we go. Wait a minute. You ready for this? The Gates Foundation. Uh, it's a mecca of globalists. And the um, word that we cannot name, which is really S-O-R-S. Doing is to... And look. Wow, the governor of Oklahoma just praised this choice. Hmm, interesting, huh? Manage to conceptualize, sometimes to catalyze platforms to address specific global challenges. Listen to, to him here. Listen to Klaus Schwab. Um, as being Tomas Diaz de la Rubia. Uh, with the greatest man in research and higher education, and also the greatest name. So World Economic Forum is um, very often um, yes, accused, yeah. or if I may use this word, um, as being, let's say, uh, the mecca of globalists. And what we are really doing is to manage, to conceptualize, sometimes to catalyze platforms to address specific global challenges. So the verticals are those, are those grand challenges that we at OU under this strategic plan are going to be tackling. Could you just tell um, See, did you hear that? Did you hear viewers, it? Uh, your thought for Listen to him at, that at the end. To manage to conceptualize, to manage conceptualize, sometimes to catalyze, to catalyze platforms, platforms to address strategic. specific global challenges. To address specific global challenges. Now, listen to what OU President Joe Hara says. The verticals are those are those grand challenges that we at OU, under this strategic plan, are going to be tackling. Could you just tell? Um, our listeners and viewers, uh, your thought process and how you architected uh, that strategy for research. Yeah, I came at this from the perspective that, uh, you know, as, as, as a planet, as a, as a society, Sound familiar? we face tremendous challenges in the 21st century. We, we face and it's all centered around ESG. It's all centered around the environment. Look, this is from the Blaze Horowitz, Oklahoma governor Stitt touts Agenda 2030 Green Energy as where investments are headed. This is why he had no intention of defunding DEI at OU. When I met with Frank Keating and Ryan Walters and others, Bob Lynn of Oak Pack, who slugged this all while they were voting all this crap in. They had no intention of doing it because they're all going to make money off of it. They're all going to make lots and lots of money off of it face global challenges for us today and for future generations 
that require us at universities to be creative, to be innovative, to identify opportunities to create solutions to these global challenges. Solutions. What we also have to do is to complement what is done on a macro level. At the high on level, a micro, on a micro level, so in your communities. To address the manifold challenges in very structured very and structured. very um, purposeful ways. So what is more structured and more purposeful than university research embedded in a community, working with community businesses and governments? Network started quickly drilling down to... They started drilling down. What is... What are those challenges and how do they map into Oklahoma? How do they map into the nation? And then how do they map into the world? So we created a yep. framework around Here's the framework. That concept of global challenges that I think is serving the university well and is serving society very well. Okay, now I'll stop right here. This is what they're, it's all, this is from the strategic research of articles that written by that guy, written by uh, the this OU vice president that uses all the DEI watchwords, but uses all the SG watchwords and calls them collective values. It's a moral system. It's a belief system. Ready? Very well. Well, it, it, it created a framework that we're now living by. Could you, could you list what those, what those grand challenges are? Here, here those you go. Listen to this. Which are aerospace and defense and national security. The so fourth industry revolution will have a major impact also on, on, uh, on warfare. So he says the first of the verticals, the first of the ground challenges, aerospace, defense, and national security. And what Klaus Schwab says here is the fourth industrial revolution, which is what he calls all of this, and the Great Reset. He has several names for it. Will have a great response or a great effect on warfare. And But what they don't tell you here explicitly is that the enemy is anyone who disagrees with this movement towards this system launch in China. Of and I, uh, it's the future of energy. Energy and environmental. So let me just start that up. will have a major impact also on, on, uh, on warfare. Uh, it's the future of energy. Energy and environmental sustainability. It's the future of health. The life of sciences and the future of health. If you look at health, there are so many issues, uh, not just, let's say, medical issues, but um, issues, social issues. Social issues. And society and community transformation. Those are the four pillars. Those four verticals really represent the areas in which we as a university can focus, bring all our disciplines, all our colleges, departments. Including the OU Children's Medicine. Together across all the campuses of the university to truly tackle these grand challenges that are going to impact Oklahoma, that are going to impact the nation and the world. It's not lost on me or anyone else that all of this progress has taken place during COVID, uh, during two years of complete disruption. No, the fourth industrial revolution is not just a prolongation of this digitalization, it's much more. Um, it's a combination of technologies. A combination it's of technologies. Just... And so then it gets into the actual nitty gritty of what they're actually gonna do. And I'm gonna talk about this on another episode, but I just wanted to connect all of this. What you're seeing in Edmond, Oklahoma, stretches out all the way to the WNBA with Brittany Griner. And, and the trans issue there, and all the, you can follow it all the way back to the University of Oklahoma and why we are seeing this stuff because this started, they hired this guy in January of 2019. There's a timeline where you start seeing this stuff directly related to what this guy is doing at the University of Oklahoma, what the president of the University of Oklahoma are doing, what the Board of Regents handpicked by the governor of Oklahoma are doing at, in Oklahoma. They seek to transform this state into something that is not what the state was meant to be. They want it to be a member of the global society, not a state of the United States of America. That's what it comes down to. And they're going after your kids to accomplish it from the micro level, like what Klaus Schwab was saying, all the way up to the macro level, which includes the globe. They call the third industrial revolution basically the electronic revolution. So... Uh, he talks about it in that speech. I can go find it and show you guys. But they asked what what the other industrial revolution was. The last one was basically the internet. 
But what he's talking about the fourth industrial revolution is being a convergence of all these technologies literally to track you. And that's the rest of the video. I'll just let it play. So digital technology, just think of genetics, think of brain research and so on. And the power of the fourth industrial revolution comes from the combination of all those technologies. Yes, let me, let me start with uh, aerospace defense and national security. You know, the University of Oklahoma has tremendous assets and, and, and you and I have talked about this. We believe that it is a role of a public university in the state, in the country, to help our um, warfighters, to help our military succeed in their mission. What the fourth industrial revolution will lead to is a fusion of our physical, our digital. This is th these documents I'm showing are from the strategic research verticals at OU, by the way. And then Klaus Schwab is speaking what he's speaking. I'm not taking that out of context. I'm just showing you what the University of Oklahoma is writing about in their strategic research verticals, why he outlines what it is they're writing about. The revolution will lead to is a fusion of our physical, our digital. That's the fourth industrial revolution, the fusion. Our biological identities. Uh, we have focused, because we're here in Oklahoma, we have focused strongly on the application of our radar capabilities that we radar. have developed over the decades for um, weather. Uh, predicting and, and understanding weather. We have taken those technologies and are now applying them to very important national security challenges. Where are they traveling? How are they traveling? What are they eating? What are they consuming on the platform? So individual carbon footprint tracker. Mm. Stay tuned. We don't have it operational yet, but this is something that we're working on. It's also, as I said, helping us now transition those technologies and, transition the technologies. and develop those technologies to help our military against uh, the major threats that we face from our adversaries. The worst attack in our nation. Who are the adversaries? The War of 1812. Who are the adversaries he's talking about here? The president here tells you. From our adversaries. The worst attack in our nation's capital since the War of 1812 widening political divisions, exposing the fragility and preciousness of our democracy. This again, this again amplifies the fear of people who, who, um, who feel losing control and, um, and then, of course, try to find um, protection in believing in more, let's say, populist um, approaches. And that's it. This, you can trace it all back. You can trace it all back to one place, the University of Oklahoma, in Oklahoma, which goes back to this global institute run by this guy, chair of the board, all the way back to the WEF, in their own words. Not mine, theirs. That's it, guys. So when you ask, why, why is this happening in our schools? Look at this. And they are trying everything they can to make sure you look at all of the problems and not the root of the problem. They've tried to take me down. They've tried to, I've been, I mean, just all kinds of different ways. Verifiable, objectively verifiable. I can show you evidence. I have actually. So, you got to do something about it. You don't want to see any more assaults in the bathrooms. You want to see more pornography in your schools. You don't want to see more social emotional learning, turning your kids into political robots of, of, of identity politics. Then you've got to start criticizing the people you think you like because they're the ones doing it. It's the truth. It'll still be the truth later on if we lose. It, it's still the truth a month ago before the election. It was always the truth. And until you recognize that, you lose. You guarantee a loss. So that's what I got. Please like, subscribe, share the channel. We will see you soon. Stay unwoke.